me just confirm. Yes, all tasks on the checklist are complete. Traveler, Paimon, we are grateful for your assistance. Thank goodness you were able to come as soon as we contacted you. Who knows how we would have coped with all these commissions otherwise. The last couple of days have been pretty busy, but it was all super easy stuff, like delivering and escorting goods. When we heard that you were short on people, we thought we were going to be in for another long and drawn-out adventure. Being the seasoned adventurers that you are, it's true that you are suited to work of a much higher caliber than your recent assignments. However, this situation is unavoidable in Mondstadt at this time of year. That's right. This is the ideal season for harvesting crops and fruits. And for the wine capital of Tavat, it's also the all-important winemaking season. Farmers are anxious to sell off their fresh produce, and all the major wine merchants are seeking to purchase top-quality ingredients to make new product. Ah, well no wonder we keep hearing people talking about wine these days. Huh? What do you mean? Seriously? Yes, I swear I'm not making this up. The acting Grandmaster wants everyone to gather at headquarters in the main hall. Hurry! We need to leave right now or we'll be late! Hey, wait up! Uh, why do those two knights look so... flustered? Well, hello there. If it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. What a rare pleasure. <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't one of those occasions where you need to come to everyone's rescue. All that's happened is that the Knights of Favonius have just received a letter from the Grand Master. Acting Grand Master Jean will be convening a meeting in the main hall shortly to go through it. Whew. Well, that's a relief. Wait, hold on a second. What did you say? Grand Master of the Knights of Favonius? That's... isn't that Varka? The leader of that legendary expedition? So, what did Varka say in the letter? How's the expedition going? When are they getting back? Oh, so interested in our Grand Master all of a sudden? Never knew you were such a gossip. It's only normal, isn't it? That you'd be curious too if there was someone you'd heard loads about but never met. Even Master Jean says he's a living legend. Oh, pretty hard not to get hyped up after hearing that. Besides, the expedition has been going on for ages, and we still never heard a single thing about what they're up to. <laughs> the acting Grandmaster is very gracious in her appraisal. Varka brought quite a bit of trouble to those around him on the road to becoming a legend. I'll have to tell you about it sometime. Anyway, since this has piqued your interest, why don't you join me at headquarters, and we'll see what the letter says. We do miss our honorary knight, after all. It's been quite a long time since your last visit. Sure, let's go and see what it's all about. Bye, Catherine! See you soon! All right, take care now. Gliding be faster.
Hmm. It looks like just about everyone's here. Hey there, cutie. Paimon. I didn't know you two would be coming. So you heard about the letter? Yep. We ran into Kaya near the Adventurer's Guild. Oh, wow. Paimon's never seen so many people in the main hall at once before. Oh, Paimon's getting kind of nervous now. <laughs> Don't get too carried away, all right? If I know the Grand Master, the fact that he has the time to be writing letters means it's probably nothing serious. It certainly won't be bad news. Kaya's exaggerating a little, but otherwise I agree. After all, Mika's not the kind of person who'd be able to keep it hidden if something were the matter. The truth would be written all over his face. Over there, look. The kid standing next to Jean in front of the staircase? He used to be a land surveyor in Eula's team. He's very talented in what he does, and a very reliable person. When the expedition team set out, the Grand Master appointed him to be the core member of the frontline team. He's the one that brought back the letter. Please, may I have your attention, everyone? Now that we're all here, let's begin reading out the letter from the Grand Master. <clears throat> Mika, please, go ahead. Y yes master Jean. Uh, right. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I am Mika, surveyor of the Reconnaissance Company. Uh, recently, I have been taking part in an assignment with the expedition team. I will now be reading Grandmaster Varka's letter aloud for you all. <clears throat> to the Knights of Favonius. Greetings, everyone. This is Varka. The first thing I want to say to you all is please put your minds at ease. The expedition is safe and all of its members are accounted for. Oh, well, that's fantastic news. <sighs> My palms are sweating. <sighs> um, may I continue? Go ahead, Mika. All right. Now that your fears are allayed, I trust you'll be ready to listen to the rest of my letter. I'm writing to you from the northernmost reaches of Tevat by the light of a stove. The expedition forces are stationed here while we restock. I once told you that the purpose of this expedition was related to a dangerous secret from days long past. I am still unable to disclose more than this, but suffice to say that you needn't worry about how our mission is progressing. In the past couple of months, we received an unexpected visitor. The Fatui Harbinger known as the Captain. Uh, the Captain? I am fully aware of the Fatui's outrageous actions in Mondstadt in recent history. Nevertheless, the captain was not hostile towards us on this occasion. Open parenthesis. I rather suspect that's because this time, Snezhnaya and we are in the same boat. Close parenthesis. The man hides everything under the mask he wears, so no one can know his past or his origins. However, one thing is for sure. He is as hard as iron for having the courage to challenge gods as an ordinary mortal. I don't doubt that he could even take out a ruin guard by stabbing it in its big, glowing eye with one of Klee's crayons. Open parenthesis, don't get any ideas. Close parenthesis. Our scouts have confirmed that the captain received orders to head for Natlon three days ago. We'll be able to sleep much better now that we don't need to worry about him anymore. I will admit that some of his actions have helped us, but even then, he owed us at least that much. This year's Vinelaza Fest must be kicking off in Mondstadt any day now. What a great pity 
that this year, once again, we will be unable to spend the festival together. Everyone here is always thinking back fondly upon the fine wines of Mondstadt, as well as the happy times we have spent with each and every one of you. I hope that you and all the citizens of Mondstadt enjoy the festival to the fullest. Have a few drinks on our behalf. The Dawn Winery's limited edition Vine Laser Fest seasonal special will do nicely. May Lord Barbados bless Mondstadt, and may the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. Varka. P.S. If you're wondering who's tougher between me and the captain, well, I'm the Grand Master. There are ten captains in the Knights of Favonius, but only one Grand Master. Ah, ha, 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 ha. His left, not mine. The letter ends here. Thank you, everyone, for your attention. Thank you, Mika. Master Jean, um, I just noticed that there's something else written on the back of the last page. <clears throat> P.P.S. I ran out of paper, so I'll add this here. Lisa, the following is a message for you. Uh, oh, uh, this part seems to be from the Grand Master to Miss Lisa. Oh, for me? Uh, seeing that it's a special message, Lisa, we'll discuss this in private. Everyone, as the Grand Master mentioned in his letter, the Vinlesa Fest is in just a few days. And how fortunate we are at this time to receive word that all is well with the expedition. Though they are unable to return to Mondstadt and spend the festival with us, the Vinlesa Fest will nonetheless be a major event that all of Mondstadt is looking forward to. I hope that everyone will guard your stations and perform your duties, both for our far-flung colleagues involved in the expedition, and also for the hard-working people of Mondstadt. And of course, during your time off, I hope you will be able to rest, relax, and enjoy this long-awaited festival. That brings our meeting to a close. Dismissed. Did Paimon hear that right? They ran into the Fatui's captain? Hmm... Who knows what that was about, but it must have been important. But, eh, uh, Fatui Shmatui, the real big deal here is the Vine Lisa Fest. Sounds like there'll be loads of free food and drink. Paima wants to hear more. Hey, cuties. How about we go and chat with Jean? You didn't get a chance to say a proper hello with so many people here. Ah, Lisa, the Grand Master's letter is just on the table. Traveler, Paimon, it's been a long time. Apologies, I didn't get the chance to talk with you during the meeting just now. If you don't have any plans in the immediate future, why not stay in Mondstadt for a while? We'll be celebrating the Vine Lisa Fest very soon. Don't be deceived. Jean may appear very composed, but she's been missing you both terribly recently. <sighs> Lisa... <laughs> I'll leave you to catch up. I'm going to read my letter. Yeah! Mondstadt's where our journey began, after all. We have a lot of fond memories here. Um... Master Jean... Neither of us really knows anything about this Vine Lisa Fest. Could you tell us more about it? <laughs> yes, of course. The Vine Lisa Fest is an ancient Mondstadt festival, just like Ludi Harpastum and Windbloom. In addition, it's the most important part of the fall. Each fall, the west wind blows in Mondstadt. 
Legend has it that the wonderful scent of Mondstadt's winemaking during the harvest season entices even the animal archon into attendance, being the great wine lover that he is. No matter where he is, he will transform into a soft breeze and return to his homeland. <sighs> yeah, that sounds like the animal archon, all right. For this reason, Mondstatters call the western wind the returning wind, the Vinlesa Fest originally began as a celebration to welcome Lord Barbados on his return. In the past, every household would brew fresh wine around this time of year and keep it sealed at least until windcoming day during the following year's Vinlesa Fest. Uncasking the sealed wine is a symbolic way of inviting the Animo Archon to share a drink. Legend holds that if the Animo Archon is satisfied with the taste of the wine, he will summon a gentle breeze to richly bless the people. Knowing him, it was probably blessing them with more good wine the next year. That's a good question. Huh. But there's really no way of knowing. These are very old stories. Many of the details have been lost to time. Some stories change completely as they get passed down. Hence why these days, Mondstatters will get into endless arguments over what kind of flower a wind bloom is. Mm, all part of how cultural heritage is created. Indeed. But for the time being, at least, the tradition of paying tribute to the Animo Archon on Windcoming Day is still alive and well, and the Vinlesa Fest remains a time for Mondstatters to share the joy of the harvest with one another as they partake of fine wines. This is a time of the year when many Mondstatters living away from Mondstadt return to their hometown. For those unable to return, Vinlesa Fest is the period when they miss their family and friends most keenly. Oh, so that's why the Grandmaster wrote, May the wind carry our sentiments back to your side. For this year, we've joined forces with the Church of Favonius and the Adventurers Guild to host a celebration on the banks of Cider Lake, just outside of Springvale. There will also be a traditional wine market during the festival period. Wine market? Well, originally, it was simply a place where winemakers and farmers would come to trade in raw ingredients for winemaking. These days, it is a much grander affair. Not only will you find a range of choice wines, but seasonal fruit beverages and food items for everyone to enjoy too. A lot of people also sell secondhand goods and handicrafts at the market. The Knights of Favonius plan to use this as an opportunity to do some fundraising for needy children and elderly people in the city. Wow, sounds pretty cool! If you have the time, I encourage you to take a look around. I hope you'll find it a worthwhile experience. Um, now, Lisa, what was the Grand Master's message to you about? I was just about to bring that up. The Grand Master says he wants me to handle something for him. Something to do with Razor's past. Razor told us that he was raised by a pack of wolves in Wolvingdom. He never knew his parents. In his own words, the wolf pack is his lupica, which means family. Yes, that was as much as I knew as well. But in his letter, the Grand Master says that in the cabinet above the third bookshelf, to the right of the grandfather clock in Jean's office, there's a wooden box containing some items that Razor's parents left for him. He says it's time to give the box to Razor. Does this mean the Grand Master knew Razor's parents? It would seem so. The Grand Master didn't simply run into Razor one day in Wolvendom and teach him how to use a sword. No, the connection between them goes back much further. Wow! Well, come on! Let's go find Razor! He'll be pretty excited to find out something about his true parents! Hmm... Oh, cutie. Nothing escapes your eyes, does it? For the child who never met their biological parents, this kind of conversation is always a difficult one, even for the most well-adjusted. By contrast, Razor grew up in Wolvendom and has had very limited contact with human society. Who knows whether he's ready for this or not? I'm sure the Grand Master will have given due consideration to Razor's circumstances, 
Perhaps he felt that now would be the most appropriate time. Hmm, that's a good point. Okay, cuties, can I leave you to break the news to Razor? He thinks of me as his teacher, so he might not open up to me if he gets upset. But you are his trusted friends. I think it makes more sense for him to hear about this from you. Thank you, sweetie. Try to be as encouraging as you can. Someone his age needs all the love and support they can get. usually around Wolvendom, right? Uh, how do you think he'll react after hearing about this? trap. Hmm. It looks like the ones that the hunters from Springvale use. Huh? What is it? Electro energy? Hmm. Paimon wonders if it could be Razor. But Paimon thought he was pretty good at avoiding the hunters. Well, anyway, let's follow the traces of Electro and see where they lead. Traces lead deep into Wolvendom. Let's keep going. Razor, are you there? All right, the last trap has been set. Razor, thanks for coming with me all this way. It's okay. My legs are strong. Hmm? What is it, Razor? <laughs> it smells... familiar. Friend. From far away. Razor! Oh! And it's Draft too. Are you two hunting together? Yes, it's almost harvest season, and the boars are venturing into the towns and wineries looking for food. They're trampling crops and destroying the vineyards. Someone could get seriously hurt. The Knights of Favonius came to us asking for help, keeping the boars a safe distance away from the population. I and Uncle Browncat catch boars, protect everyone. Wow, Razor! This is a big step for you! Paimon remembers you used to hide away from the hunters. <laughs> you can say that again. Razor was the star of the show this time. He let the wolves know we'd be coming, so we were able to get through Wolvendome without anyone getting hurt. Helping everyone, helping Lupacall, makes me happy. <sighs> but much talking. Very tired now. Actually, we came here today because we have some really important news. Oh, I don't know. Razor, do you mean you don't want to know about your real parents? I want to know, but don't want to know. Uh, so you... Do you want to know, but at the same time you don't want to know? Huh, sounds complicated. 
Traveler, come and take a look at the trap I just placed. Let's give Razor some space to process things. Uh, yes, I have some thoughts about this after seeing how Razor reacted. We've been hunting together a lot recently. The kid might not talk much, but still, I feel like I've come to understand him a little over the time we've spent together. Here's what I think. He definitely wants to find out about his parents. It's just that his fear of the unknown is overwhelming everything else he's feeling. I'm a father myself, so I know a thing or two about kids. You know, when Diana was little, if I got back late from a hunt one night, she'd be watching me like a hawk for days afterwards, as if she was worried that I might abandon her. Do you mean Razor's worried that he was abandoned by his own parents? Exactly. I think that's the heart of it. And if it turns out they did, well, I don't think there's anything we could say to console him. That's not my only concern, though. Razor is developing at his own pace. There are lots of issues that can't be solved all in one go, but he's making progress, one step at a time. But now this thing with his parents is added into the mix. It might push him to want to figure out once and for all where he comes from and where he's going. Seems like a similar take to Lisa's. Hmm. Maybe all mature adults think like this, huh? Wait, but then again, Master Jean had a different view. She said it's more about trusting other people and in your own instincts. Oh, what do you think? Gotcha. Well, knowing that he's got a friend like you to rely on makes me feel much better about this whole thing. Okay, got it. Right, let's head back. We don't want to keep him waiting. Hey, Razor. So, what are your thoughts? Still thinking. My heart... it feels strange. Like being stabbed by a wolf hook. Tharka? Hmm. Tall. Very strong. Likes to laugh. Yes. Trust. He's very good to me. Give me a name. Teach me to fight. But now... Busy with important work. I miss him. You know, Razor, Farka used up all the paper writing this letter, but he still made sure he found room on the back to add a note for Lisa. He specifically told her to give you the things that your parents left for you. That means that he thinks the items have a special meaning for you. But more importantly than that, whatever happens, the Traveler, Paimon, Lisa, and all your other friends will always be here for you. That's right. And old Uncle Brown Cat's here to support you as well. Okay. Thank you. I decide... I want to go with you. To see Teacher. <laughs> That's the spirit, kiddo. Well, you folks better be heading off, then. I'm just about finished here, so I'll be heading home very shortly myself. <sighs> I'd better try and get plenty of father-daughter time in before the, uh, fine laser fest starts. <laughs> Bye, Drax! See you again next time! We brought Razor! Hello, teacher. I'm here to see the box. 
Ah, my little wolf cub's in a good mood. I'm assuming they've discussed the whole story with you already? Here, this is it. The wooden box. I haven't touched it, except for taking it out of the cabinet. When you're sure you're ready, you can open it yourself. Yes, I am sure. Oh, this is just a pile of junk. Paimon thought there'd at least be a letter or something. Uh-oh. You don't think that, after all this time, Varka might be getting mixed up between different boxes? <laughs> there is a scent. A scent? What kind? A scent I remember from a long, long time ago. It's their scent. Human scent. Father and mother scent. Oh, incredible. You still remember scents from all the way back in your childhood. Wow. You have a really good sense of smell, Razor. Guess being wild by nature has its advantages. Oh, let's see what other leads we can find. Hmm, this woolen hand puppet looks kind of wonky. Guess it must be handmade, huh? Is this a part from a ruin guard? Wait, hey, look. This wine bottle is still half full. And there's a note stuck on it. Thousand. Uh, Thousand Wind Wine. Oh, so it's a bottle of Thousand Wind Wine? Teacher, you know? Of course. Thousand Wind Wine was the first kind of wine that Mondstadters ever learned to make. Or so they say. As to how it got its name, some say it's a reference to the numerous ingredients used to make it, while others say it's because every bottle tastes slightly different. I remember reading somewhere that there are all sorts of weird and wonderful ways of brewing it, and that it's very difficult to ensure it comes out tasting the same each time. This all makes it impractical to commercialize. Wine merchants are much more comfortable working with reliable, consistent-tasting products. That's why you'll almost never see Thousand Wind wine in the markets or taverns. Huh. In fact, it looks like your parents brewed this bottle themselves. That must mean there's something pretty important about it. <gasps> oh, Paimon has an idea! Razor, you got a good nose. Why don't you open it up and take a whiff? Maybe it'll tell you something. Okay. Huh. He seems really in the zone. And is that a smile? Find anything? Sweet, cold, a little bitter. I like many things all mixed together. Ugh, but things in wine smell different. Even you can't tell what it is, Razor? I will try again. <sighs> it's okay, Razor. Don't push yourself too hard. What do we do when we try something and it doesn't work? Try another way. That's right. You still remember what I taught you. Oh, it's almost the Vine Lisa Fest. Everyone who knows anything worth knowing about wine will be gathering in Mondstadt. Surely someone will know a thing or two about Thousand Wind Wine. Oh, great idea! Make sure you don't miss the opening ceremony, cutie. Everyone will be there. Razor, you should go too. It'll be a good opportunity to ask around. Okay. Ask many people. I will try. Don't worry. We'll be right there with you. We can be your go-betweens. You know, like you are with the wolves for draft. Okay. Then I will go back now. I need to tell Lupacall about human mother and human father. Great! See you at the opening ceremony!
Thank you, everyone, for your patience. I am pleased to announce that this year's Vinelesa Fest has officially begun. We hope the residents of Mondstadt and visitors from all over will enjoy the magnificent wines and experience the joy of the harvest. When Wind Coming Day arrives, we will hold a grand toasting ceremony to welcome the Animo Archon Barbados back home. Let the wind lead. Let the wind lead! Razor, you're here already! Hmm, so many people. Come on, let's sneak out of here. There's someone we gotta find. Find? Who? Oh. Just some tone deaf bard. But he's also a know it all and loves nothing more than drinking, so he might actually be able to help. How do you do? <laughs> I had a feeling I'd run into you soon, during this most enchanting of festivals. Spoken like a true poet. Hmm. But reading between the lines here, if one bottle is tipsy and two is merry, just how many is enchanting exactly? <laughs> oh, don't say that. This festival has so much more to offer than just drinking. Anyway, hey, Razor. How have you been? All right. I have a question. Yeah, Razor has something he wants to ask you about. Know anything about Thousand Wind Wine? Ooh, now there's a name that takes me back. <laughs> Let me think. How long has it been since I last heard someone mention Thousand Win Wine? Razor's parents left him a box with a half bottle of wine inside. And there's a label on it that says Thousand Win Wine. We heard there's a lot of history behind this type of wine. And the brewing methods go way, way back. So we figured you'd be a good person to ask. It smells good, but don't know what's inside. I see, I see. So you want to know how Thousand Wind Wine is made? Well, you came to the right person. I happen to know a little rhyme called... Well, as it happens, Thousand Wind Wine. 
I was going to save it for wind coming day, but far be it from me to deny an early serenade to a friend in need. How about it? Shall I recite it for you? A song. Not easy to understand, but still one to hear. Excellent answer. Then, uh, hear it you shall. Fill up the barrels and store them away. Then wait, wait for a windier day. Wax the bottles, seal them tight. For the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue? As Mondstadt to the ear, like a sweet dream of freedom. And what are the fruits that went into the brew? An explorer's courage, a love tender and true. A defender's will, strong as yesteryear. Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer. Turning sour into sweet, bitter notes fade away. As we wait, wait for a windier day. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the applause. Uh, was the rhyme of help to you? Like wine. A little sweet, but now... Head spinning. Don't understand. Don't worry, it's not just you. It was supposed to be about winemaking, but it didn't give a single detail about the process! <laughs> well, maybe it's a little abstract and romanticized, but that's one of the defining features of Mondstadt poetry. Okay, so let's try to pin this down. What did the poem say the ingredients are? Hmm... Um... An explorer's courage, a love tender and true, a defender's will, and... The Thousand Winds? Song of Good Cheer? Nope, Paimon has absolutely no idea what any of these refer to. Look, Tone Deaf Bard, you clearly know what the whole thing means, so could you do us a favor and at least give us a hint? You misunderstand me. I'm not trying to make you work for it or anything, but the lyrics are what they are. If there's anything they left out, even I can't fill in the blanks. If you want to know the secret behind this sweet scent, you might have to start by rolling up your sleeves. Rolling up our sleeves? You mean, we need to go and make this wine for ourselves? And somehow that'll teach us everything we want to know? Uh, this better not be a prank! We've known each other for so long, and you still don't trust my intentions? Oh, oh the pain! I trust. I want to try. I want to make wine and find answers. If I know how to make wine, then I know what is in father and mother's wine. Right. I want to know about them. Well, if you say so, Razor, guess we'll have to take Tone Deaf Bard's word on this one. We'll give it a try, and as first-time winemakers, there's no shame if it turns out bad. Don't worry, really. Freedom is the key here. It's not as hard as you might think. As long as you add ingredients to the mix in a spirit of joy and sincerity, I promise you will reap the rewards you wish for. Hmm. I will tell Poem to teach her. Then I need to think alone. That's the spirit. So how about we meet again in two days? Let's say, same place, right here? Okay. I will remember. See you then. Scare. Ah, good. I was hoping we might get to chat some more. You need a refresher? Okay, <laughs> I'll perform the first half again. Fill up the barrels and store them away. Then wait, wait for a windier day. Wax the bottles, seal them tight. 
For the south wind that soothes, for the north wind that bites. How does this fine wine taste to the tongue? As Mondstadt to the ear, like a sweet dream of freedom. And what are the fruits that went into the brew? An explorer's courage, a love tender and true. A defender's will, strong as yesteryear. Joining the thousand winds in a song of good cheer. Turning sour into sweet, bitter notes fade away. As we wait, wait for a windier day. I am fond of each and every one of Mondstadt's festivals. But if I'm honest, Vinelazerfest has an extra special place in my heart. You know, the Animo Archon goes into a slumber after the west wind dies down, leaving the north wind to blow during the winter. Which means this festival is the big feast before the winter slumber. I wouldn't worry yourself too much about him. Staying true to their journey and discovering joy and freedom for themselves is what Mondstatters do best. The same goes for you. You have to find the thing that makes you happy. <laughs> Mostly because your happiness is very important to me. See you around. Remember, there's no rush. Take your time and you'll find all the answers that you're looking for. <laughs>